Welcome back to Plant-Based Kidney Health. Michelle Krosmer and Dr. Sean Hashmi here. Dr. Hashmi, tell us about IV contrast dye. Is this something that people with kidney disease need to avoid? Um, what kind of precautions do they need to take? Yeah, so Michelle, this is a great question and, and this is an important one. So I think we'll do a second segment where we'll actually talk about specifically with gadolinium contrast. Today, we're going to talk specifically about iodinated contrast. And in general, when we talk about iodinated or iodine, so iodinated contrast material, that's what you see when you're getting a CT or what's known as a CAT scan, oftentimes people will call it. Now, what we know about this iodinated contrast is that in animal studies, it's been shown to be toxic to the kidneys. And there are studies in human, but these are uncontrolled style, uh, studies. And you can imagine that it would be very hard to do a controlled study where a group was getting contrast specifically. That wouldn't be right. So the best data we have shows that this type of contrast can affect the kidneys. But the, the devil is in the detail in terms of what do you need to know? So Let's talk about a few things. The first thing you want to know is that when we talk about acute kidney injury or damage to the kidneys from contrast coming in, oftentimes what we find is there are other things that people are forgetting to talk about. For example, if the person's volume status is low, then giving them contrast can increase the risk of them having acute kidney injury. Some people may have cardiac dysfunction. In other words, they might have had a heart attack or their ejection fraction or how well their heart squeezes is low. And as a result of it, putting contrast into the kidneys can increase the risk of having. So when we talk about true contrast-induced acute kidney injury, it's a little bit tricky in that there are oftentimes secondary events that are occurring at the same time. Now, in terms of the risk of having sort of contrast-induced acute kidney injury, that risk really depends on what your starting kidney function is like. So let's start with the lowest risk people. The lowest risk people are those who have a GFR above 45. So if your kidney function is above 45, then that's the lowest risk group, essentially. There is nothing to be concerned as far as that goes. The risk is very, very low. Then we get to the next category, which is a GFR between 30 to 44, and that's a small risk. Now, there's a study by Ellis and colleagues. This was in the uh, American Journal of Rheumatology um, that was back in 2019, I believe. And in this particular one, what they showed was the incidence of acute kidney injury was about 1% higher in patients getting contrast versus those not getting contrast who had a GFR 30 to 44. So in other words, 30 to 44 is still a very low risk. But the most important category is the GFR less than 30, and that's where the risk of contrast-induced acute kidney injury goes higher. How much higher? And the same study with Ellis and colleagues in 2019, what they showed was that 35% of the patients who got contrast with a GFR less than 30 developed acute kidney injury versus only 14% of the ones who got a non-contrast study developed acute kidney injury. So certainly contrast had something to do with it. Now, as you think about going in for a study, you always have to weigh out the risk and benefits. So in other words, there are times where we tell patients we absolutely need the study because it's critical. It could be life-threatening that we need to know what the underlying condition is. So in terms of overall broad risk categories, the first one is, is of course, you can look at it as GFR or you can look at it as creatinine. So creatinine greater than 1.5 is a much higher risk versus less than 1.5 is a much lower risk. Now to add that, another risk factor is the risk of diabetes. So if you have diabetes with a creatinine greater than 1.5, that has a substantially higher risk than if you just have a creatinine greater than 1.5. So anybody with diabetic, and kidney disease has a much greater risk. Once again, going back to the volume status, if you're dehydrated or what we call hypovolemic, if you have heart failure, which means that your ability of your heart to squeeze is compromised, if your blood pressure is low, all of those things would increase the risk. Now, in the past, if you had asked me this long time ago, I would have said the type of contrast material 
matters. So in other words, there used to be high contrast osmolarity type of solution. And there were two other ones. There was a low osmolality and there was an iso osmolality. Well, high contrast or high osmolality contrast was the one that had the highest risk of acute kidney injury. We don't use that anymore. So in other words, from a contrast perspective, the risk between low osmolality and the risk between iso osmolality is very similar. So that's dependent on the hospital, which one they end up using, but that's not the risk factor. Now, the last portion of this is what can you do to prevent getting acute kidney injury? So when we deal with patients who are inpatient, meaning they're admitted to the hospital, we use normal saline. Normal saline, just good old normal saline. And the standard regimen doesn't really exist, but it's somewhere between giving them about 100 cc's an hour for about the first 6 to 12 hours before the procedure, and then after they get the contrast with the CT scan, to continue another 4 to 12 hours after. Now, this is for inpatients. And how do you determine? Is it 6 hours? Is it 12 hours? That's based on the clinician judgment, based on volume status, based on heart failure, comorbidities. In patients who are outpatients, generally speaking, what we do for them is we'll give them about half a liter or 500 cc's of normal saline about an hour, about 30 minutes or so before the procedure. And then afterwards, we'll tell them to drink water so that they stay hydrated and flush everything out. And then the last prevention thing to note is if you are on metformin, which is a diabetes drug, we always want you to stop it at least 48 hours before the procedure to reduce the risk of acute kidney injury. Now, the very last thing is one of the common questions that gets asked is what about patients on dialysis who still have some kidney function left? So there were lots of theories about the idea that maybe you should do some kind of dialysis right before or right after, but it turns out the data doesn't support that. In fact, what the data shows is that when it comes to dialysis, if you get contrast, just go to your regular treatment whenever that is. It might be the same day, it might be the next day, or whatever it is, that's fine. There's no evidence that doing dialysis immediately after will preserve renal function. All right, that was a long-winded answer, Michelle, but there you have it. In terms of contrast, specifically iodinated contrast, which is done for CAT scans or CT scans, that's what you need to know. All right. Thanks, Dr. Hashmi.